Okay, so today we're going to explore what true self-esteem is, why it's so important in your life, and six areas, six areas of life for you to focus on if you want to improve or raise your self-esteem. Now, for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Sam Neffendorf, and I'm excellent at helping people to resolve anxiety and self-destructive behaviours that they have in their life. And I do this by helping them to raise their self-esteem, raise their confidence and their self-discipline as well, so that they can actually start moving towards a life that is truly richly theirs and that they love. And of all of those three areas, the self-esteem, the self-confidence and the self-belief, actually the most important one is self-esteem because it kind of entails the other two as well, as you'll find out as we go through this presentation. So what do I mean by self-esteem? It's, it's something that's talked about a lot and there's lots of different um, definitions of it and there's more useful versions I think than others and the, the how I like to describe it and how I think of it uh, and this is a description I got from uh, Nathaniel Barden who wrote a book an excellent book many years ago called The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem where much of this um, information which really fits in with my perspective on life but you know it really was a great framework for me to be able to explain and understand self-esteem for myself and also for people that I work with and his definition of self-esteem is that you feel a competence and ability to deal with pretty much whatever life throws at you and that you also got the capacity to do that now, of course, there's ups and downs in life, and he's not disputing that, but and that there's times that will be tough, but it's a general disposition that you can handle those sorts of things happening and you see them as things to be resolved rather than absolute life um, destroying situations that you can't cope with in general. The basic things of life, obviously, there's other things that happen that are beyond that from, and take more recovery from. So it's a combination of that competence in life and belief in your own ability, along with a general belief that you, des that you deserve, not entitled to, but you deserve to be able to create happiness in your life. So there's those two aspects of it are the, um, that sort of self-efficacy, but you are able, you're capable, and if you're not capable, it's something you can learn to be capable because you generally feel good about your own ability and your own effectiveness and ability to learn and carry out tasks in the world, and that self-respect and self-esteem that you can have and create. Yeah, not all the time, but, but happiness is a is a state that you can achieve through your own your own actions, basically, and and the impact and influence that you will have on the world. Okay, and this is self esteem is really important because it's really is part of either a virtuous or toxic circle in your life, so a spiral rather, and it's self esteem is not just something that you can get like that uh, you can't just decide right now i have self-esteem and that's it it's something that you can say those things but you you won't necessarily believe it in your inner world in your subconscious world so it's something that you kind of have to prove to yourself you have to um because esteem is your regard isn't it so the dictionary definition of esteem is regard so it's self regard and you know, to, to achieve self-regard, then you have to actually take the actions which move you towards living 
as you want to live in the way that you want to live in a way that fulfills your desires so taking um taking the actions or the steps or whatever to move towards yeah actually having self-esteem so it's, it's, it's kind of a virtuous circle if you do the things because you take the actions and then that increases your self-esteem and then you take more actions in line with who you are and what you want and that increases the self-esteem and of course it goes the other way so you can find yourself let's say you're in unconscious actions and actions that are against who you are uh, i'll give some examples later on where you actually start to reduce your self-esteem and I think yeah, it's not something that just happens. Rarely, it's like a massive boom. There you are. As with as with every area of life, real transformation doesn't usually happen with one massive hurrah success. It's a drip, drip, drip of one percent or even point one percent increases or decreases in in your life, basically. So. You don't necessarily notice these things day by day. It's a case of looking back at them and actually understanding what's happened uh, as a result. And, and then you know, gradually your self-esteem improves as, your, um, as, as the actions that you take become more in line with who you are and you start creating outcomes which are more richly to do with you and what you want. So... It's a couple of a couple of examples. Let's think about, you know, let's say if you've just got a a new job or a promotion at work. And if you're someone who has a fairly high self-esteem, then they, this might feel great. You might be relishing the new opportunity. You might you will be at peace with the idea that you don't actually know everything that you have to do or how to do it. But you can learn it you're confident that you'll be able to learn the things that you need to do because you generally feel competent in yourself so it could be quite an exciting time if you are um if if you're someone who has low self-esteem however even though you might really have wanted that job even though it, or the promotion or whatever it is then you get it and then suddenly it's like oh, all this extra responsibility it's too much to learn i'm not sure i can handle this and you go start going down that downward spiral and starting to make make or even not make decisions but even not making a decision is a decision of course and then ending up falling down this sort of thought loop of overwhelm procrastination could eventually lead to you losing the job or the, or being demoted or whatever uh, in that world of work, and then you've got the evidence that you need to further reduce your self-esteem. Um, so, in relationships, uh, this is another area where self-esteem is massive, and generally, this is going to fall in. You know, question: If you don't believe that you're lovable or deserving of love, for some reason, this stuff, of course, often goes back to childhood and early patterns which is why uh, techniques like EFT, matrix reimprinting, are really brilliant for resolving these early um, patterns because you can just clear the emotional attachment to them. But you, yeah, with, so let's say you've got this core belief of being unlovable, then you might actually be either looking for relationships with, might be pushing for relationships, for example, with people who aren't interested and then feed, using that to feed your belief of being unlovable or you might find that you when if you get into a relationship you act in such a way to be do things like being controlling trying to stop the other person from doing the things that they want to do whatever so that they so you know drop, doing the behaviors which kind of lead to unhappy relationships effectively so that you can again prove to yourself that you're unlovable and reduce the self-esteem further and you might find that if you do actually find somebody really truly loves you which you want at your core but you've also got this pattern in your brain of trying to prove yourself that you're unlovable then you'll have this doubt about them maybe they've got maybe they're a terrible judge of character maybe there's something wrong with them if they you know if, how could they love me if you know if you haven't got this level of self-love for yourself how can this person love me so 
yeah so very so you can really uh reduce like you like self-esteem and the actions that you take it's either a virtuous circle uh moving up in life with every action um gently increasing the self-esteem or it can be downwards spiral and you know as well as work relationships of course this does impact on every area of life it can impact on your health uh do you make the healthy decision today or do you just put it off to tomorrow a lot of this is about putting things off and oh i'll deal with it then and each time you do that it's a chip away at the self-esteem and yeah gradually making these this spiral worse and worse uh so yeah it could be making bad bad decisions with what you eat not doing the exercise that you promised yourself that you do promise yourself and that's a big one so by not doing what you promised yourself you're losing your personal integrity which i'll come on to in a bit and um yeah so health interpersonal relationships of course we've talked about like romantic relationships but yeah it could be relationships you know with with the wider world friends how you deal with people how you put yourself across whether you're comfortable saying expressing your views or if you you feel like you're a wallflower and you can't do that and you don't feel confident in putting your your view out because your fear of what will be said etc so yeah really um every area of life is affected by self-esteem which is why it's so so important to have it so yeah so i mentioned uh nathaniel uh barden earlier on who wrote the excellent six pillars of self-esteem and i was so happy to find uh this uh information because it really did kind of codify everything you know my views on what's really important in for people who want to create an excellent life in line with who they are areas of life that they need to uh look at and understand for themselves so these are the six six areas that i think that you need to um be looking at in your life if you are um if you want to increase your self-esteem and the good news is no matter where you are what level you're at in life i know we can't it's arbitrary of course but no matter where your self-esteem is it can be improved and the more you improve it the sort of more it's going to spiral up ultimately so the pillar pillars are i'll just say what they are it's living consciously self-acceptance self-assertiveness living purposefully and integrity for yourself so self integrity so those are the six areas and really important and i'll just go through what they mean now so living consciously this is about making mindful decisions about whatever you create in life and whatever comes your way so it's about actually embracing life and if you've got for example a difficult situation if something goes wrong then it's about owning that and actually making decisions to resolve so you could call it like stepping towards life rather than moving away if you just go back into your habitual behaviors your escapism whatever that is that might feel good in the moment whereas the going towards the problem might feel scary difficult but ultimately will be more rewarding um, when you manage to resolve it or make step, as many steps as you can to resolve it whereas the um well yeah going into your old pattern might feel comfortable for a while but does not really help you in the long run so yeah so that's living consciously it's actually you know really being aware of what's happening it's not about being 100 percent present in the moment all the time but it's about you know really making thoughtful decisions catching yourself when you are living unconsciously like we all do and of course that's part of life it's absolutely fine and then taking you know taking these good decisions and a key a key important part of this is that context of the situation really matters so if you are um let's say you're watching a movie then this is the time to zone out and really get into the escapism and enjoy it. Or, you know, if you're socializing and having a drink with friends and 
you know, then this isn't the time necessarily to be always thinking about these deep, serious things in your life. It's, you know, time to lighten up, have some fun. Yeah, let yourself um, enjoy yourself completely because it's, that's context, that's the right context for that occasion on holiday where you are recharging or whatever. These, you don't have to be always, it's not about having this, oh gosh, everything has to be serious. Always got to do these big, important decisions at every time. But it's about when that is important, that is when you do that. So number one, living consciously. The next one is self-acceptance. And again, this is a term that I think gets sort of bandied around in the personal development world. But yeah, what does it actually mean? Well, for me, this means, you know, really actually, again, not avoiding how you're feeling, not avoiding how you're thinking, but really, really just being aware of everything that's happening in your inner state, the actions that you've taken and the things that you've done that have led you to where you are, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what's happening in your life now, and really owning that. So you have, and without blaming yourself, blaming in a bad way. So you're accepting that you've done this, then not beating yourself up about it. It's about, okay, so this is where I am. And how do I now move forwards from here in a way that's more in line with my purpose, more in line with my values, more in line with what I want my life to be like? What do I do now? And so it's, you know, you can use wherever you are, um, you know, in most situations, for most people, there are ways forwards that you can then create a conscious and valuable way forwards. So, yeah, so not being your enemy is really key here when you are thinking about your um what you what what you do next when you're fully accepting and owning your behaviors not being your enemy but also not saying oh well that wasn't like me at all and denying responsibility for your behavior you it's accepting it and then moving forward from there with compassion for yourself not beating yourself up but re- yeah this is it i've this is where I am. My life is like this now. How can I get it to whatever I want it to be? And of course, you know, that's, that requires for most people, perhaps more of a focus on actually what they want to create in their life, their values, their vision for their life, etc. So the next one, number three, um, fairly similar. But a lot, some of these have some similarities, of course, and they all link together. Is self responsibility. So this is really the self ownership and just being a hundred percent responsible for your own happiness in your life. And this is this I think is quite difficult um, for some people to actually realise that they're not entitled to someone else making them happy. They can't rely on outside forces to become happy. They have to create their own happiness and it can even actually really understand what happiness is for them and then be fully responsible to taking that forwards in their life in whatever way that is different for everyone and that's one of the great things about self-responsibility everyone's version of happiness is unique so what you want to do is yeah really work out what your version of happiness is um your values um, and what they all mean to you to fulfill those values, the objectives, um, and then the conscious habits that can enable you to move towards that. And the great thing is actually you can feel that happiness to begin with. So you can actually create the inner state of happiness and then move towards, and then you get to understand what that would create in your life if you were feeling that more and then actually start to create the outer reality of happiness as a result now along with this um, the next one pillar number four is self assertiveness so this is about actually being confident in putting your point across in standing up for yourself in not taking on someone else's views of what your life should be like and living them this is um 
you know, this is really hard for a lot of people because we're all conditioned to, from a very early age, to respect authority, to have a certain, um, a certain, a certain goals hardwired into whatever society you're from, wherever, wherever you're from in the world. Um, there'd be ones that are similar everywhere in the world, and then there'll be specific ones towards your society, and then of course from your family and your upbringing as well. And so there's a lot of um, some of this very positive. I don't, it's not like it's all bad. Some of it very positive. But is it all in line with you? Um, is some of this not serving you anymore? Then, you know, then you are actually wanting to assert yourself, your view, your values, and, you know, really move towards being able to express yourself and your needs and with the awareness that you're responsible for fulfilling them. Of course, you can. Of course, there's people who may want to help you. You can, you can ask for help. It's not about you're not an island with this stuff you're not just doing it all on your own you know we are social creatures but you know if you just if you're just living someone else's dreams then or just living to fulfill someone else's requirements then you're you're really living a second-hand life and not actually fulfilling your own actualization um and building your self-esteem so the more that you can assert your position you know, without being mean necessarily or anything like that, but it's about, you know, just, yeah, this is actually important to me and, yeah, and being assertive, not aggressive necessarily with what, you know, with what you want, then, uh, yeah, this can really be valuable in creating the life that you want. So, yeah, so self-assertiveness is number four. Uh, number five, living purposefully. And this is uh, really about, um you know, are my actions in line with the life that I want to live? Or am I just doing, just floating about, which might be the life you want to live. In that case, it's fine. But if you have specific things that you want in your life, then you can then always, you know, just being conscious, being aware, fits with the living consciously very well. You know, am, is what I'm doing in line with who I want to be, with who I want to become, with who I really am inside once I clear all of this conditioning and domestication and then are, and are my goals are my objectives are they actually right for me still so being being open to failure as feedback rather than rather than it being a sad miserable thing to fail it's actually okay yeah that didn't go right maybe that's not what I want or if it is then how can I approach it differently? So, so yeah, per, being purposeful, always asking your quest, yourself questions of whether, you know, am I still on the right path? Am I doing the right things? And so on. So, yeah, so, so yeah, being living on purpose, again, not all the time, but when it is the right time, in, you know, probably in your work, um, in, if you're, yeah, whether, whether you're employed, self-employed, whatever, all of that ultimately you're always self-employed because you've either got a contract with one person that you've agreed or you've or you're or you're self-employed in the more traditional sense so yeah living purposefully and then a really big one is integrity to yourself and this is such a great way of describing this is uh who are you or what do you do when no one else is watching so if you are on your own and you've got these things that you want to achieve are you moving towards them at that time are you keeping your promises to yourself or are you going down procrastination rabbit holes and actually finding yourself like drip 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 eroding your self-esteem as you break your promises to yourself really and you know and even if other people trust you you feel in your heart or maybe I'm not who I say I am. So it's not being true to who you are if you don't have integrity to yourself. And I think this is really, really important. And yeah, of course, you know, not everyone lives these things 100% of the time, but the more you live with integrity to yourself, the more that you're likely to, you're going to raise your self-esteem. So those are the six uh, pillars of increasing your self-esteem i think they're very valuable and uh they were self-acceptance self-responsibility self-assertiveness living purposefully and 
integrity to yourself. So they're from um, Nathaniel uh, Barden's book, Six Pillars of Self-Esteem. Excellent. Highly recommend it. And yeah, try living that way. Try some of these things. And every little bit that you do, you will find that you can start to feel better about yourself. And it's that self-fulfilling upward spiral. Now, what I will say is that, you know, some of this stuff is very hardwired in. So if you're finding that you keep going down self-defeating patterns, then there are ways that you can resolve that. And the ways I like using the best are the tapping techniques such as EFT, matrix re-imprinting, uh, but you can also use things like um, NLP, hypnosis, uh, many, many techniques that can support you in actually finding the root cause of why you're holding on to patterns and then changing and transforming that so that you can live with mo much more of this purpose, uh, self-integrity and consciousness and really, you know, upgrade your self-esteem so that you can have more of a life and the happiness that you really do deserve and can go for. So just like to say, that's it for now. If uh, anyone's got any questions, then I'd love to please feel free to uh, type them in the comments. I'm just going to look at those. And I am offering, if you're ready to level up, if you're ready to explore this and increase your self-esteem so that you can improve any area of your life or all areas of life, in fact, then book a 30 minute conscious discovery call with me and we can have a chat about that as we're here i'll just just say those six pillars one more time which is living consciously self-acceptance self-responsibility self-assertiveness living purposefully and integrity to yourself i think you know all of these are going to improve your life in so many ways um, type Y if you want to book in a conscious discovery call with me. And if you're watching this as a replay, feel free to ask any questions in the comments. I will definitely get back to you um, with a response. So thank you for joining. Thank you for spending some time with me. Hope you have an amazing day. Bye for now.